everybody. My name is Millie, and on behalf of Double Radius, welcome and thanks for joining us today. So we're going to get things started. Uh, as always, the goal of our webinar today is to give you tools to build a better network. And with that, we're excited to bring to you our speakers from Seacrew and Facebook Connectivity for a discussion on the multi-hall telegraph series. So let's start with some introductions. Up first, we will have David Bauta from Facebook's Connectivity Group. Dave is the strategic partner manager at Facebook, where he looks after the Facebook Connectivity Group's partnerships with OEMs, including Terragraph licensees such as Seaclue. Dave has been at Facebook for three and a half years and has a background in wireless product development. Following David, we'll hear from Alex Dorden at Seaclue. As the VP and GM of Seaclue Americas, Alex focuses on leading, creating, and executing the strategic vision to provide gigabit speed wireless connectivity for multiple applications, including helping to bridge the digital divide in underserved urban as well as rural areas. So before we jump into the presentation, a couple of important things to mention. Uh, first, as you have questions, just enter them real time into the questions box so we can queue them up and get them answered. Uh, we will have a Q&A at the end of both segments. Second, after the webinar, a survey will pop up on your screen. We ask that you take just a minute for that as we really appreciate your feedback. And as a thank you, everyone who sticks with us till the end and submits a survey will receive a link for, wait for it, a $5 Amazon gift card. You can't hear it, but there's thousands behind me hearing. Um, so before I hand it over now to David Bratha from Facebook, we're going to take a quick audience poll. And we're going to take about 15 seconds to finish up the poll. Okay, and the question is, which best describes your interest in Terragraph technology? So just take a few seconds to enter your answers. About 10 seconds left. Five seconds. And let's close the poll. So our results are, Already deployed it, 14%, considering deployment, 18%. And the winner, curious to learn what it can do, 68%. So with that, I am going to hand it over to David Bratha from Facebook. Thank you, Millie, and the team at Double Radius and Siklu. It's, uh, it's really a pleasure to be able to join uh, this webinar and give a little bit of background on the uh, the Terragraph technology, uh, you know, as Facebook is involved in this um, ecosystem, it's a common question, you know, what exactly is Facebook's part been? What role have we played? So I thought I'd give a little bit of a background on that as well as the origins of, of Facebook uh, before turning over to Alex to talk more specifically about the Siklu offering. Great, so, so let me start just taking a step back and mentioning, you know, Terragraph is a project under the Facebook Connectivity uh, Org. This is an organization within Facebook, which has a mission to bring more people online to a faster internet. A uh, pretty simple mission in, in words, but, uh, you know, certainly very challenging in practice. Um, but, you know, we like to take on uh, daunting connectivity challenges and look at, you know, how we can apply technology and business approaches towards basically uh, reducing the barriers to, to getting more people online to a faster internet. There, there are a whole basket of projects underway under this org at Facebook, so Terragraph is, is one of many, but all of them tie back to this mission about getting more people online. So the particular problem that the Terragraph technology sought to tackle was this one of last mile connectivity, specifically for a uh, gigabit per second class connections, if we can call it that. Uh, the challenge with, you know, getting this class of connectivity um, proliferated and extending to end subscribers and across various use cases, of course, the uh, de facto or the incumbent technology being fiber is expensive to deploy. It's time consuming to deploy. So at Facebook, we recognize that this is probably a pretty fundamental barrier to basically more people being connected at gigabit per second speeds. So we undertook to look at a wireless alternative uh, to fiber uh, to draw costs out of the uh, um, infrastructure. 
So with that in mind, of course, you know, first step is to look at what spectrum makes sense to, to use. Um, the 60 gigahertz uh, block of spectrum became very quickly um, uh, you know, evident as being attractive because of a few reasons. One is it's unlicensed in many parts of the world, right? So if, if low cost is the objective, unlicensed technology or unlicensed frequencies, I should say, um, you know, are certainly compelling. The other factor is that huge uh, bandwidths of it are available. So up to 14 gigahertz, uh, you know, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, available for use, so very promising. And then finally, with um, you know the the release of the 11 802.11 AD standard a few years ago, and the beginning of adoption of 60 gigahertz technology in consumer applications, we saw that the um, supply chain side, the component supply chain for 60 gigahertz, was coming down significantly in cost. So a lot of promise in this spectrum. Uh, to use as the uh, you know the wireless base for for this project. Some of the challenges though with 60 gigahertz technology, of course, you know it's it's a line of sight technology. It does have limited range, uh, you know, compared to many other parts of the the spectrum. Um, and you know, being unlicensed, of course, there's also going to be interference challenges. So. It was important to build a robust stack to mitigate these challenges and really unlock all the benefits of, of the 60 gigahertz spectrum. And this is where uh, the notion of a directed mesh came into play, right? So we realized that uh, by deploying 60 gigahertz with these pencil beam links deployed in what we call a directed mesh, where you can actually have redundant links, uh, redundant access to you know, fiber points of presence as well as subscriber locations and multiple parts through a mesh to close, uh, you know, a link between any two points uh, was important. So we got to basically working on a full stack that, uh, you know, didn't just look at the 60 gigahertz technology and the link level um, problem, but also, you know, looking at how to mesh it, route traffic through things in a redundant uh, and resilient manner. And the vision is depicted on this slide, right? That if you build it the right way, you could build out these radio nodes deployable on available street furniture and building rooftops um, that could build out a mesh and ultimately distribute capacity available at a limited number of fiber points of presence, you know, much more broadly through a, through a geographic area. Next slide, please, Alex. So with this vision in mind, we set out with some deep R and D, uh, actually, you know, within Facebook, so we we hired a, you know teams of engineers to basically start building out and prototyping and doing the R and D into how <clears throat> into building a solution as depicted previously. So what you can see on this slide are some photographs of very early days of Terragraph ideation at uh, you know on our Facebook campus in Menlo Park. These are some images of us testing. Um, some of the phased array antenna systems, um, you know, kind of building from the ground up. Of course, once these elements were proven and, and working well enough, we moved on to focusing on upper portions of the stack. Now, um, important in all of this R&D work was to ensure that we weren't developing a proprietary technology, uh, that it would be open and standardized and readily adoptable by a broad ecosystem. So we readily contributed much of this work, specifically the, the Mac level elements of the uh, Terragraph specification that we came up with into the IEEE 802.11 AY standard. So if you open that standard up, you'll see in the uh, distribution networks subsection, you know, much of the contribution is actually uh, from, from the Terragraph project at Facebook. Next slide, please, Alex. So of course, uh, you know, it's it wasn't sufficient just to publish specifications and standardize the the, the technology. Um, you know, key to getting the technology adopted by by the market, and that means both by you know vendors of of wireless products as well as the service providers, uh, enterprises, etc., end users. Very important to demonstrate the technology and its potential. So we undertook to actually build prototypes. Uh, it also meant working with silicon providers to get much of the um, Mac and radio uh, elements in, uh, implemented in silicon. Uh, so through the, those types of partnerships and through in-house engineering, 
you can see some of the prototypes, early prototypes that we developed to go and basically demonstrate the technology as well as continue to evolve it towards what would finally be released to the market. And I'm pleased to say that our uh, OEM partners such as Siklu have done a much, much, much better job on, on the industrial design and the look and finish. So, you know, don't, don't judge a book by its cover in this case with these, uh, with these interesting ID pictures here. Next slide, please, Alex. Uh, we also took uh, to deploying, right? Not just building the the, the prototypes, but you know, building out some fairly large scale, uh, let's say, demonstration networks. The very first being in our own backyard in the Bay Area in San Jose. Uh, we deployed a several hundred node uh, network in downtown San Jose. Uh, basically, a Wi-Fi backhaul uh, use case throughout town. But I think the main aspect here was testing out the resiliency of the mesh. We had a few fiber pops feeding this network uh, and we were able to, through this network, further evolve the, um, you know, the firmware and the software that, that really encapsulates the Terragraph standard. So very useful um, test bed. Um, next slide, please, Alex. Then important to take the technology to uh, some more, I would say, real world or hard hard uh, use cases so working with service providers facebook led a, a handful of trials and here you know you'll see pictures of a couple of, or three of the marquee trials that we um undertook with service providers including with magyar telecom that's part of deutsche telecom uh we did that in a couple of villages in hungary uh, we have a fairly de large deployment that's still uh, operating in malaysia in georgetown with uh, ytl local operator there and of course, uh, with um, with our friend Gino at Aeronet in Puerto Rico, another trial deployment. So uh, th these were early stage demonstrations of the technology where Facebook was leading and deploying these uh, these trials. These days, you know, we no longer really have to undertake this type of activity because our partners, such as Siklu, are at the at the forefront of of trial uh, and uh, let's say early deployments now that their com commercial solutions are available. So this was an, a necessary chapter, but um, you know, I'm very valuable, but I'm glad to say we were able to graduate into letting really our ecosystem partners deploy um, you know, market-ready product from this point forward. Next slide, please. So if we take a look at where we are in the ecosystem today, it's a pretty exciting time for the program. Uh, we've got six OEM partners, including Siklu, that are now offering um, product, commercially available product that, that's based on the Terragraph technology. Uh, the supply chain is, is healthy in terms of chipsets available, uh, RF antenna modules, relevant CPUs, etc., that support the, the, the products um, implementing Terragraph. The, the Facebook-led trials, as I highlighted previously, um, have been valuable and and say many of those have evolved into now commercial activities involving our, our OEM partners. There's really a far larger number of trials underway being led directly by our OEM partners. So, and we are engaged in supporting those, uh, you know, with, with Ciclu, as I'm sure Alex can attest, we're pretty active on a, on a number of fronts. Uh, and then, you know, building out the, the ecosystem further to include systems integrators, uh, as well as, um, you know, providing tools for automated network planning, given that that's quite a new challenge for something like Terragraph. So the road ahead, uh, of course, again, exciting that now commercial products are available. Uh, you know, it's been um, a handful of months now, but still relatively early, early days. So we're very excited to see all the applications and use cases that our uh, partners are finding uh, behind the technology. And I would note, you know, not all of these use cases necessarily tie directly to our people connectivity mission. However, we see them all as important because, you know, the broader set of, of uh, applications um, is going to increase the market for the technology, which is just going to be healthy for the overall mission of, of you know, basically having this infrastructure continue to be available and do well for people connectivity. So with that, I'll turn over to Alex and, um, well, actually, I'm sorry, we'll do a Q&A before, before passing over to, to Alex. Um, so here's one question, David, that came in. Um, does Facebook anticipate Terragraph um, will be deployed in rural areas? 
Yeah, there, there are. Um, we've certainly seen interest with, uh, you know, some service providers that serve more rural areas in, in what we, we call kind of um, rural clusters. So because of the, the, you know, let's say range limitations, and this varies from product to product, right? We're not talking about multi, multi mile links here. We're talking about perhaps, a, you know, few hundred meters um, at best. So urban density, or at least I should say residential density does work better for compared to lower density deployment areas. But with that said, you know, we've seen pretty good business case for deployments in rural clusters where, you know, it's a small community, but the homes and residences are near enough that it makes sense to deploy something like a rooftop based or street furniture based telegraph mesh. Awesome. And then another question that just came in, um, have you provided the backhaul for 5G millimeter wave cellular, cellular service using Terragraph? Not commercially just yet. That is certainly an area of strong interest for us at Facebook. So, you know, would it always encourage any, any outreach for, for opportunities of that nature. We are working with a, a number of partners on, on making that a reality, though. Uh, just nothing commercial yet. And one last question, um, what power is required for, um, for a node and how do you draw power from a light pole or traffic light pole? So that, that is going to vary from vendor to vendor. Um, what you would see in the Terragraph ecosystem is that different vendors have chosen to put different number of radio sectors and you know active radio elements in, in their boxes. So it, it would vary and rather than me misspeaking and misquoting, I would, I would suggest to please check uh, any of our partners' spec sheets for their products. Um, but indeed, you know, power to, to the site is something to be solved in some cases. In the case of street lighting, for example, there, there may already be power available. In other cases, some site remediation would be required. And then, of course, for building deployment cases, you know, that, that's a, a topic in and of itself, right, how to uh, basically gain access to uninterrupted power uh, in buildings. We, we don't really directly solve that challenge under the Terragraph problem, um, but indeed it's a dependency uh, for, for the technology. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, great, thanks, David. All right, Millie, I'll turn it over to you. All right, so we're going to do uh, another poll to get some very important information. Okay, so how many of you today are wearing your pajamas during this webinar? This is crucial. First option, not me, wearing regular boring work clothes. Second, nope, but got my t-shirt on and working from home. Third, totally rocking the PJs. And uh, may I add, if you're not wearing any pants, skip the poll for the love of everything holy and put on some pants. And let's see, uh, I'll take a few seconds. Get some answers. Give you another five, and the answers are. I have a window in front of me. Wait, okay. Ooh, the big one. Not me wearing regular boring work clothes. Well, we hope that we we uh, shake up the boringness. Uh, some people got my T-shirt on and working from home. Twenty-one percent, and totally rocking the PJs. Three percent. And uh, I'm with those people. Okay, so now we have that. We're gonna do another quick poll. It's gonna be less serious. No, I'm just kidding. To get some really good information. Your wireless deployments include, and check all that apply, residential and commercial broadband, video surveillance, surveillance security, smart city, municipalities, small cell backhaul, and fiber handoff. So it'll take about 10, 15 seconds to finish this up. Another seven seconds, let's say. And let's finish up the poll and get some answers. The residential and commercial broadband is 92%. Seems like the clear winner. Video surveillance slash security, 46%. Smart city slash municipalities, 29. 
tied with small cell backhaul 29. Oh, and fiber handoff, not too shabby with 46%. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Alex from CCLU for the CCLU Multi-Hall TG Overview. Great, thank you, Millie. And uh, thank you, David, as well, for giving the introduction on Facebook Terragraph. Uh, so what I want to talk about now is a little bit about CCLU uh, Multi-Hall Terragraph or Multi-Hall TG as, as we call our uh, Terragraph product family. So we are a, a, a Facebook Terragraph OEM. Uh, we've adopted the, uh, the Facebook Terragraph technology into a, a range of our products, uh, and which we launched a few months ago and uh, which Double Radius are now selling as well within the, the North American marketplace. So uh, first of all, I kind of want to look at a little bit from a um, gigabit per second connectivity point of view. You know, how does uh, uh, Terragraph, if you like, or fixed 5G millimeter wave, which is what Terragraph is using 60 gigas compared to, for example, fiber as well as uh, 5G new radio. So, you know, fiber is great if, if you have it, as we, as we all know, you know, it's very secure, lots of capacity, but the problem with fiber is obviously it's, it's not available everywhere. Uh, and where it's not available, it, 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 it's expensive to deploy and and take a long time to deploy as well. Uh, you know, getting permits and everything, you could be talking about, you know, months, if not, uh, you know, years, whatever. And, uh, and it can be very complex as well from an information point of view. Uh, so what about fixed 5G millimeter wave wireless, which is basically what Terragraph is based on, 60 gigahertz. You know, so some of the, um, the, the key attributes, if you like, of, of this technology is a very secure technology. Uh, it's really as secure as, as fiber. It's used by a lot of high security applications. So some people are kind of concerned about, you know, using wireless for high security uh, It's very secure. It's lots and lots of capacity, as Dave talked about. There's lots and lots of spectrum within the 60 gigahertz space. So we can deliver multi gigabit capacity, uh, which is uh, unique to wireless is really the only wireless type of technology which can deliver this high capacity. Uh, it's affordable, certainly now with Terragraph, uh, it's even more affordable, uh, which means it can be used for many other types of applications, which we'll look at a little bit further on as well. Uh, it's very low latency, so it's great for video streaming, as an example, uh, very reliable because it's immune interference, it does not compete with, uh, with Wi-Fi, it's not in the, you know, the Wi-Fi spectrum, you know, the five gigahertz type thing. So it, it's great for use in cities where there's a lot of uh, RF noise, for example, and it's very quick to deploy, very fast time to market um, because, you know, you, again, you're not having to do trenching, whatever, you literally put up a wireless link in, uh, in you know, a day as opposed to, you know, many weeks or months. Now, how does it compare to new wave uh, radio, 5G radio? So uh, 5G new wave radio or cellular uh, is, is really more of a mobility uh, type application, you know, what ATT Verizon are deploying. Uh, it's not really for uh, fixed wireless access. Um, you know, the, some of the kind of the, the issues with it, it's limited in spectrum, uh, you know, it can require expensive licenses for the operators. It's really designed for mobility from a um, application point of view. And, and if a, 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 an end user, if you like, like a city wants to use it, they're having to obviously pay for the, the bandwidth, having to pay for the usage as opposed to owning the network. So from a, uh, you know, an application like video surveillance, as an example, smart city or even, uh, you know, gigabit bandwidth, internet access is not a, a great application for things like that. It's more mobility, cellular type of technology. So that's kind of how it compares. So uh, Ciclu, you know, we've been in the millimeter wave wireless market for over 12 years now, and, and we sell a whole range of millimeter wave uh, products, uh, both in the E-band, the, uh, the longer range, high capacity, but also in the 60 gigahertz, uh, the technology that Telegraph is based on. Um, you know, we've been selling 60 gigahertz for many, many years now. Initially, as a point-to-point -point application, street level. A few years ago, we introduced point to multipoint 60 gigahertz, and uh, now this year we introduced the Telegraph, um, you know, mesh-based um, range of products uh, for street level rooftop application, uh, which also we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we are specialists in millimeter wave and we are the market leaders in this technology. So uh, Ciclu's multi-hole uh, TG product line, if you like, so some of the kind of key attributes uh, about it, you know, we, we have both a um, distribution node, uh, we call it, or a node as well as a range of terminal units. So it's kind of some of the kind of key Attributes about our uh, technology, we use a 360 degree uh, distribution node, which is fairly unique uh, compared to some of the other OEMs uh, using four 90 degree sectors. So it gives you full complete, uh, you know, 
360 degree coverage, if you like, from a single uh, box, single radio. It's a sim simple single cable installation. We've kept the uh, installation very, very simple. There was a question earlier on about power, for example. So it's a single cable that provides power and network connectivity. It's all PUE powered. Uh, our radios typically uh, require um, um, 24, 25 watts of, of power. And we also actually provide PUE output as well to power other devices, for example, Wi-Fi access points. It could be you know, video surveillance cameras uh, or any other IoT devices which are powered by PUE. Uh, they have a built-in switch, so no need for an external switch or third-party box. So we like to keep it very, very simple. Uh, and we enable integration to uh, third-party devices as well, like billing, OSS practices, uh, et cetera. So again, we keep it very, very simple. And then on the uh, the terminal unit side or the client node side, on, on the right, we have a range of different uh, solutions or options as well, you know, both short, medium, and long range with a number of different types of antennas for different distances. Again, there was a question earlier on about rural. Uh, yes, we can, we can, you know, provide um, systems for rural as well. For example, you need to go, you know, like a kilometer, a kilometer or a couple of kilometers. We have solutions uh, in, in that area as well. Uh, and a key thing, you know, provides in, in-house RF design. So if you do um, require assistance with putting a design together for a neighborhood, for example, uh, you know, a city, it could be a campus, whatever it is, we can provide you uh, design assistance for putting that uh, telegraph design together for you. Uh, so this kind of gives you an idea of what a uh, multi old TG topology may look like. Uh, this is kind of like a neighborhood coverage, or it could also be a campus, it could be a city. You know, it's a very fast, flexible, and scalable type of deployments, you know, connecting, uh, you know, rooftops uh, down to maybe single family homes, uh, you know, lampposts as well, um, both, you know, the point to point, point to multipoint mesh type of technology with, with backhauling. Uh, security uh, is obviously very high, very important. We provide uh, AS encryption as well as other different levels of uh, security as well on the, the network. Uh, you can service both uh, nodes, distribution nodes, as well as terminal units. Uh, in the network, uh, and we have a range of uh, cloud-based uh, tools for, for example, for, for planning, for management, um, as well available. So the, the distribution node, this is kind of what it looks like on, on the right. This is sat on top of a, a pole, so as I mentioned, you know, 360 degree coverage from a single box uh, from a bandwidth point of view, it provides up to 16 gigabits per second from a single box, box is actually uh, 3.8 gigabits per second per sector. So as I mentioned, there's, there's four sectors. You can actually connect up to 15 terminal units per sector. So that gives you up to 60 connections per distribution node, if you like. And that's actually the, the highest number of, uh, of connection points from a single distribution node, uh, I believe, in the, in the Telegraph family, uh, if you like. You know, already talked a little bit about the ports and, and PoE, you know, input from a power point of view, as well as outputs. You know, we support um, fiber via SFP port. Uh, 10 gig, you know, for uh, for backhauling. Uh, it's got the integrated uh, L2 switch. So again, no third-party box, no third-party switch required. It's all built in, and I'll actually do uh, self-aligning up to about 450 meters uh, from the uh, from the distribution node to uh, to terminal units. Uh, so from an installation and a field of view kind of point of uh, point of view. Uh, so if this kind of shows you the four sectors, if you like, if, if the distribution node uh, is sat either on top of a pole, uh, if you have kind of no, no obstruction from the actual pole, uh, or if it's on the side of a pole, maybe on a lamppost or a tower, for example, where you obviously may have a slight uh, obstruction from the actual pole, you can do that as well. I mean, you can even put it on the side of a building if you want. Uh, obviously, then you'd only have a 180 degree field of view. So depending on the, the application, um, you know, also on the top of a pole or on top of a building, uh, as an example, is going to give you the, the best type of coverage and able to uh, connect to the, uh, the the highest number of, of client nodes. So, as I mentioned before, it's a very simple out of the box operation. You don't need a third party control like you do with some other um, uh, telegraph types of, of systems. Um, you know, each unit is configured with a with a network assigned name or ID. Uh, the factory default is a serial number, it's, which is configurable. Um, it's very, very simple to deploy, uh, very easy to use. Uh, so if you're kind of used to you know, using um, you know, other types of wireless uh, systems, millimeter wave as an example, uh, this is going to be fairly easy for you to, uh, to adopt.
So the other thing that Sequel provides is complete service offering as well. So we're not only you know providing the the hardware if you like, we're also providing the, uh, the the design which we talked a little bit about already. So the design support, and we do have design tools available if you wanted to, to uh, actually do your own designs. Uh, we provide training, uh, both online training as well as in class types of training, implementation, professional services support, you know, extended warranties and and monitoring uh, tools as well, uh, monitoring the network. So what are the key applications for uh, you know, multi-hole TG? Where, where is it primarily used? Uh, so you know, all sorts of different applications really, uh, particularly you know, where you, you may otherwise be having to use fiber. So it's really you know, trying to extend the reach of fiber where you know, fiber is either not available or implementing it can be very expensive or take a long period of time. So you know, we find a lot of these applications include, for example, smart cities uh, and municipal networks, as example, video surveillance, I think in the poll, so you know the the result was uh, quite a high adoption of that um, backhaul networks, so small cell mobile backhaul. As as um, Dave mentioned in, in his presentation, um, you know we're also looking at um, uh, backhauling small cell as well, mobile uh, backhaul uh, with a number of applications, enterprise connectivity, connecting buildings together, for example. Uh, you know local area network connectivity, providing wider network connectivity as well. Uh, public Wi-Fi is another pretty big area, um, you know, connecting uh, uh, outdoor access points, for example, this could be a, a park type situation or it could be a, a, a you know, football stadium, uh, a retail mall, uh, you know, university campus, whatever it is, where uh, someone wants to deploy a public Wi-Fi, they don't have fiber, this is a very easy way of, uh, of providing public Wi-Fi without having to dig up the street, basically. And of course, internet connectivity is, is a huge one, probably the, the largest one, you know, providing connectivity for uh, you know, residential homes, single family homes or MDUs, multi-dwelling units, apartment buildings uh, or, or office buildings as well. And of course, with COVID, you know, everyone is working from home, studying from home. Uh, they, they find that they need uh, you know, much better internet connectivity, uh, perhaps higher speed. So, you know, we, we're finding the, a, a huge market for that. Uh, but also in the, uh, the area where you know some areas just don't have uh, good internet, right? Um, the speeds are very very low, and some people can't work from home. They can't study from home. You know that's also uh, an, an area called the digital divide, um, and that's an area that we address as well with this this technology, which is also very very important. So we're actually working with a, a number of different cities, um, universities, school districts to provide. Um, you know, high-speed internet basically using this technology uh, very quickly and very affordably. So uh, it's a great solution for, for that kind of application. So can I give you an example, so just from a topology point of view, um, you know, picture speak a thousand words, right? So this kind of slide shows you what a, a gigabit internet access type of system may look like, you know, both uh, connecting, um, you know, high-rise buildings together, maybe commercial buildings, uh, but also single-family homes. And you can see on the on the diagram, you know, you've got a, a complete mesh uh, type of topology here. You know, multiple radios connected together in, in a mesh type of uh, of network. And obviously, some somewhere on the network, you, you're connecting to a fiber pop uh, connected to the internet. So this is the type of uh, network design that we would uh, provide. You know, actually showing you, uh, you know, what is connecting to where, giving a complete bill of material, so make it very, very simple. Uh, mobile and small cell uh, backhaul network is another example. Uh, where again, connecting um, uh, multiple street lights together, buildings together uh, for a mobile small cell. It could be that. It could also include five uh, G small cell as well. So smart cities, of course, is, a, is another pretty big one. So smart cities, this could be connecting video surveillance cameras, Wi-Fi access points, and uh, uh, city buildings like schools, like um, uh, libraries, uh, town halls, fire department, whatever it is. Um, you know, provide, connecting them together, uh, providing uh, the, the city with their own local area network, which which they own, they they manage the operator, they're not having to pay for dark fiber, as an example. Uh, which can actually save them, you know, significant uh, amount of OPEX uh, per year as well, uh, and much better uh, bandwidth and, and performance. Uh, so with that, I'm going to uh, open up to uh, Q and A. So Millie, back to you. Actually, Katie is going to. Oh, sorry, Katie. Katie. That's okay. Thanks, Alex. 
Um, so one question that came in, um, I'm going to change it up a little bit, but it, basically they're asking, is the worst location for service right underneath where the uh, multi-hall would be mounted versus obviously, you know, like let's say a hundred feet out. So for example, I, I think the question is a service that like if you're putting in a Wi-Fi access point, probably, I think that's probably what they're meaning. Um, and if, if that's the case, no, then, then the answer is uh, no, that's totally fine because we operate in the 60 gigahertz because Telegraph is based on 60 gigahertz. We're else, totally outside of the, 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 the kind of the Wi-Fi spectrum, which is typically, you know, 5.4, 5.8 or 2.4, whatever. Uh, so there's absolutely no interference at all. So you could have a, a Wi-Fi X point, you know, uh, co-located with a, a telegraph radio. Um, it could be a client node, it could be a distribution node with, with no issues at all. And in fact, we, we do lots and lots of uh, applications like that. Uh, and you can actually connect the uh, the Wi-Fi X point directly to the uh, the Siglu telegraph radio if you wanted. You don't need a switch or anything because we have a built-in switch. Okay, great. Um, the next question was, is this solution layer three or layer two? This is a layer two yeah. solution. So that, that's uh, one reason uh, actually this differentiates SQL a little bit from uh, some of the other uh, telegraph uh, OEMs. Some of them uh, have adopted uh, layer three, others have adopted layer two. We chose to adopt layer two uh, really to make it simpler for the customer. So again, they don't need any kind of third party boxes, you know, switches or anything like that. Again, we, we're focused on the uh, ease of use and ease of deployment. So this is layer two. Okay, awesome. Um, third question for MDU applications: Can the client side be indoors, or does it need to be outside? Uh, so, the uh, if they mean the client side, the telegraph radio would would need to be outside. Uh, these radios re require GPS from a location point of view, so uh, they need to be able to see um, you know the sky if you like. I mean, you could they could be by window as long as they can see the sky uh, for receiving GPS. Uh, typically, you go on the roof of the building. Uh, also, then you connect inside into the building to, um, you know, uh, a router or whatever, uh, you know, a Wi-Fi access point, etc., in the building. But on the on the telegraph, the client would, would go on the roof of the building, okay. or, or the side of the building doesn't really matter. Right. Okay. Um, assuming in in 180 degree install, um, Alex, you had stated that there was 30 clients, 15 per sector. What would the bandwidth up and down? What could they expect for the bandwidth be um, per client with that setup? Yeah, that's a good question. So if you got it on, let's say on the side of the building where you've only got 180 degrees uh, view, then probably you'd only have two sectors uh, which uh, you can use unless it's on the corner of a building where you may have three you know let's say it's on this 180 so it's, it's only two and it's basically it's 3.8 gigabits per second per sector so if you like then you'll have up to about seven eight gig if you like uh, total 3.8 per sector and you can have up to 15 clients per sector so you can have up to 30, 33 zero clients uh, you know each sharing that bandwidth Okay, great. Um, another, here's, sorry, another question that came through. Um, so how far out can you string these together? I guess, so here's the example. Example, the first client can see the base, second client and beyond can't. Can you zigzag these through the countryside and rural areas um, together? Yeah, so. Assuming uh, that there's line of sight from house to house. Yeah, so, so it, it does require line of sight, as, as, as Dave mentioned as well, is line of sight technology. Um, so it depends a little bit on, um, well, a few things. First of all, it depends on the distance. So uh, the, the, with Terragraph, typically the distance is, uh, uh, and there it also depends on the terminal units. So some of the, the terminal units are kind of short range, they'll maybe do you know, a few hundred meters. Uh, we have some longer range terminal units that, that we just launched. We just launched the T280, which is a longer range stimulant unit, which will do up to about uh, one and a half, two kilometers roughly. Uh, so that, that will then you obviously you can do much, much longer distances. Uh, and just based on tariff only, obviously you can do relay points. So you can literally go from point to point to point to point. So you can, yeah, you can do multiple kilometers if you like, as long as you have relay points. So if you're going from building to building, building or street light or whatever. So you can do pretty long runs. Uh, if you're talking about much, much 
longer distances, if you're talking about multiple kilometers, then uh, you potentially use another type of millimeter wave technology, which is E-band, which is 70, 80 gigahertz, which can go longer distances. Uh, then you could go, for example, you know, multiple kilometers or miles, depending on where you're based. Um, for kind of, you know, more of the long, longer range backhaul type of solution. So you know, again, one thing that SQL provides is a design service. So if you've got a particular application in mind, we can kind of help you through that, figure out what's the best fit and, uh, you know, uh, put a design together for you. So yeah, again, just reach out to SQL and we can help you with that. Okay, great. Thanks, Alex. Um, last question, um, this kind of ties back to um, the question regarding um, the 30 clients um, and what was the bandwidth up and down with that bandwidth be symmetrical or asymmetrical? Uh, it's currently uh, asymmetrical. And what would um, physical dimensions of that, the typical CPE for um, Terragraph, what would the dimensions be? Uh, so Correct. we have, we, we currently have a couple of different terminal units available. Uh, the, um, the T265, I can't remember what the dimension on top of my head, it's roughly the same size of a, um, a Ciclu uh, classic multi-hole radio. People know what size they are. This roughly about six by seven inches, roughly. Uh, we also have the T280, which is a little bit larger. That's the longer range one. We're coming out with a, a smaller compact terminal unit called the T260, which is uh, going to be a little bit smaller in, in size uh, than that. So it, they're, they're pretty small. And, you know, the, the, the T265, the T260, they have an integrated antenna. So, you know, they don't necessarily look like, uh, like, like a, you know, a, a radio, if you like, and they're very rectangular in shape as well. So uh, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty discreet. So if you're putting onto a, a home, for example, they're not going to be... Uh, you know, ugly. They're definitely going to be more attractive than, for example, a, a traditional satellite dish on the roof of the building. It's going to be a lot smaller, and it's said re rectangular in shape, so uh, you know, much more aesthetically uh, appealing. Okay, great. Thanks, Alex. I think we have time for one more question, and then I'll turn it back over to Millie. So the last question is: um, If you're putting the base stations in a mesh pattern, what's the distance between the the base stations, not the um, not the terminal units, but just the the remote units? or the, the, the main uh, base units? Uh, the, it depends on a couple of things. First of all, it depends on the amount of bandwidth uh, you require. So, you know, if you only need like a gig, uh, it's, it's a longer distance and then it's gonna be a few hundred meters. If you need, uh, you know, full bandwidth, if you're looking at, you know, uh, uh, 3.8 gig between the two distribution nodes and it's gonna be shorter distance, then it's probably gonna be, uh, you know, um, 100 meters, 200 meters, because it also will depend on the, on the environment, you know, the amount of rainfall in that environment, you know, is it a heavy rainfall area, is it a low rainfall area, because the rainfall is going to affect the distance. Uh, we have a, uh, what's called a link budget calculator on our website, uh, so if you go into the link budget calculator, you put in the uh, the location of the, of the link, you put in the distance, and it automatically calculates what the, uh, what the, uh, you know, availability will be for that link. Okay, based on that particular distance, and also depends on the what kind of level of availability you want. You want like 100% availability, you know, pretty much like continuous uptime, or you're okay with, you know, 99.9% .9 availability. So if you get a heavy rainfall, then may, the bandwidth may drop, for example, to uh, maybe only a gig or something, and then it stops raining or move back up to uh, to to full bandwidth. So there's a few different variables, but I said the link budget calculator is going to give you the the, the best answer to that because there's a lot of variables. Great. Thanks, Alex. Uh, well, I think that's it for questions. If there's more that we didn't get to, we will answer them um, after the webinar. And I will hand it back over to Millie. Thanks, Katie. All right. So uh, as we close things out, a couple of important notes. First, hopefully you found today informative and would like to join us for future events. If so, make sure to visit us at doubleradius.com and sign up for our monthly newsletter, newsletter to stay in the loop. And second, as soon as we close the webinar, and don't forget the survey is gonna pop up on your screen and everyone who fills that out for us will be emailed a link for a $5 Amazon gift card, which is pretty cool and quite easy to do. Um, final thanks to SQL and Facebook Connectivity for helping us better understand multi-hall and telegraph. And we hope all of you listening today will determine how to take advantage of the solution in your network. And don't hesitate to ask Radius for help. And we hope you join us next time.
Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, wake the dog, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.